Diane Gray, actress, hey, producer, writer. What's up? Everything. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you so much for coming on the Uniweb interview show. I'm your host, Matthew Whiteside, joined today by Laura Ann. Laura Ann, you got a lot going on. Um, you're, you're just coming back from something, 72 hours of crazy fun times. As yeah, so and you've also got a film in the works. Let's let's start there. You have a film coming out soon, correct? Or it's in the process of being filmed? Well, we have shot a proof of concept. We have about a, a ten minute proof of concept for this film. It's a feature film, so it's it's you know a, a beast. Your very first feature that you you ever produce. And um, so we, in order to try to gain interest and just kind of show people what the story is about and, and all of that, we shot a proof of concept. We spent a few days um, working on that and just um, piecing together like a lot of the key scenes and showing the quality of the, the project, the quality of the cinematography and, and all of that, just so that we can show investors, hey, this is what we have and this is what it can look like and this is the story so that, you know, they can get a better idea. It, it's, you know, it's, it's easy to not understand something if you're just told it, but if you have like a visual representation of what you're doing, then people can can more understand and, and relate to it and connect with that. And so, so this this project is in the very beginning stages of and what what's it called? It's called Pretty Big Girl. Okay, Pretty Big Girl. And it, it's a story. It, it you know it's kind of a human interest story. Um, mm -hmm. It's about a a woman who um, has very deep seated. Um, issues with herself um she's a little overweight she's not as pretty as she'd like to be she works in the like magazine photography and and all of that kind of business and so she's surrounded by beautiful people and so she always feels less than like she's yeah. not good enough she's not pretty enough she's not skinny enough and, and all of these things and she feels like no one could ever be interested in her and yeah. um so she she meets up with this photographer who's drop dead gorgeous and you know it, it baffles her because he's actually interested in her and so it's it's like a struggle um within herself of why in the world would this guy be interested in me is he after something is you know there's something wrong with him you know <laughs> um, and so um yeah, so there's there's a lot to this story. She actually has leukemia, and um, so it you know it, right now we're trying to decide is this a happy ending or is this a sad ending. So and the ending uh, hasn't been written yet. Well, we have two different endings. Okay, I got you. And and I think depending on who picks it up, that's going to be the one we go with. We originally wrote this in order to get it into Lifetime or Hallmark's hands. And of course, if you're doing Lifetime or Hallmark, you know, they're like gonna be like, what? Um, no, there has to be a happy ending. And yeah. so we're like, okay. So I, I wrote two different endings depending on on where we go with this. So, yeah. I was gonna ask, so what your role in, in this movie is a uh, writer? Um, in the whole the screenplay or? Interesting. Um, <laughs> well, I, I wrote the script, and okay. then in, in doing the proof of concept, everyone who was involved in the project was like, and I, I was going to direct it as well, and they were like, you need to play this role. And I was like, okay. Um, and they're like, no one's going to understand it. No one's going to relate to it the way you do, because it, it's actually built upon my own um, self and, and where a lot of those feelings come come from is from my own insecurities and and all of that you know I've been in the inter entertainment world nearly all my life and I'm not a skinny girl and so I get past you know over and over and over again um you know people like my head shot but then when they see my full body shot they're like oh never mind um <laughs> I'm not a size two or three or four you know yeah um I'm not even a 10 <laughs> um so yeah it, it's Hard being in the entertainment industry and, and having a passion and drive and, and 
talent for it. I mean, I'll just say yeah. it. I, I think I do. Um, and, and not being able to find many roles that people will put you in because of, of your body shape and, and that kind of thing. And that's what this whole project is about is not to just shed light on that issue, but the, the main message of the whole project is to learn to love yourself how you are and where you are yeah. and, you know, just push forward no matter what you're doing because it doesn't really matter what your shape is what matters is that you love yourself and so that that's where it comes from learning to find some internal worth is, is definitely and it's I, I totally understand you on this because i've got this beautiful head with this big old body <laughs> 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 it's so difficult, I know. It is, <laughs> but it is because once we realize, and um, I can totally relate to that. Honestly, I can. Um, when we realize that we're so much more than what we have on the outside, that internal worth, then we can walk into a room and own a room. It doesn't and um, that's that's cool that you, you wrote. How long did it take you to write this project? Um, I wrote it in about four months, I guess. I, I was actually driving down the road and I, you know, I wrote this for a specific person purpose. Um, I actually have another feature film that's a period piece and, um, it, you know, period pieces require a lot of money. And, you know, I've, I've been told by producer after producer after investor after investor that if, if you don't have something under your belt already to just show that you can produce a feature, um, then you're not going to get that kind of money. And I was like, okay, yeah. so um, what film can I write and produce to, to, to show that I'm capable of that? And I was just driving down the road one day and it just came to me because I was thinking about my own insecurities and my own issues and how I'm pulling myself back from letting me reach my full potential and getting in my own way and yeah. i want light bulb you know how many people in this world are dealing with this issue yeah. it's a very important message and i was like okay and so i started writing it <laughs> yeah it is so common right i mean the like the one to two percent are the the beautiful like perfect bodies the ones you see on magazine covers and that kind of thing and the rest of us are just like <laughs> walking yeah. through life you know, and and even, to, like, even then, those those bodies who are, you know, somewhere in the zero to, to four range, even when you see them on the magazines, they're still Photoshopped to make them look even, you know, more so, which is... Yeah, so this is, I'm all airbrushed right now, too. This, it's all, <laughs> it's all makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I, I've, I've got my ring light up here to, to help a little bit. Make sure... It makes your eyes look really cool. Like you have a. Uh, I was watching Blue Planet last night. Blue yeah. Planet 2, and there was like this fish that had these crazy. <laughs> it had these crazy eyes. Like he got really blue eyes. <laughs> but it had, like this little white center. They look. I do have very blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. Um, so pretty big girl. You're you're working on that, and uh, you said you have a period piece that you've already done. Well, I'm, that's Earth. the next major project that I, I want to go with. It's, it's, it's a bear. It, it would require a lot of money and, and everything, but it, it's the one project that's in my head, and, and it's called Seven Trials. And um, it's the one project that's in my head that I feel like really has the potential to just blow up because of the storyline. Um, so I, I, that's what I'm pushing for film-wise, is to be able to produce Pretty Big Girl so that I can show, hey, I, I can do this. I, I might be a woman. I might be in Huntsville, Alabama, um, but I can do this. And so, um, you know, I have a, a great team of people around me and, and a great production company that I work with. Um, uh, it's called Brownwood productions here in Huntsville. They have anything and everything you could possibly want in a, um, in a you know, grip and electric and cameras and, and all of that. And they actually helped me with Pretty Big Girl. Um, and so, 
they're amazing. And so I, I have all the people around me in order to make, you know, these projects and make them look absolutely gorgeous and, and everything. Um, it's, it's just finding the money, which is, you know, the hardest part in, in filming, right. finding the money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Getting financed for sure. But you've been doing this for a while, though. You've been in the, the industry for a while. Um, you, you grew up kind of on stage and stuff like that, right? I mean, dancing and singing and yeah, a little bit of your background. Yeah, I, I grew up in Atlanta. Um, I was a dancer for the Georgia Ballet and I did my acting training with Alliance Theater in Atlanta. Um, mm -hmm. And when I left Atlanta, I, I went on tour with Disney's Beauty and the Beast. And um, I That's did that cool. for yeah, I did that for about 18 months, and then my father was like, it's really great what you're doing, but um, you need to go to college. And, uh, <laughs> How old were you at the time? I was 19. 19, okay. Well, I was 18 and 19. Um, right. He was a disabled veteran of Alabama, and so I could go to any Alabama state-supported school, uh -huh. free ride. All I had to pay for was fees. And so um, he's like, you can't pass that up. You know, if, if entertainment's what you're going to do, it's going to be there whenever you get out of college. And so I went to the University of North Alabama and theater degree, performance, a concentration in directing with a, a photography oh. minor. Yeah. Um, and then went to college, met my husband, started a family um, by accident, really. <laughs> it's funny. That's how <laughs> yeah. I don't know how it happened. I, I don't know. Um, I just did. And um, so, you know, of course, that put a halt on, on a few things. Um, but my oldest is, is now nine. And when she was, you know, two, two somewhere in that range, um, someone actually from the Beauty and the Beast show um, contacted me because they were working on a pilot for Lifetime. And they were like, hey, you know, why don't you come down and audition and that kind of thing. And I actually missed the audition um, phase because I, of course, I, I wasn't familiar with film. I didn't know how things worked. And yeah. um, so I contacted the, the casting director who was doing background casting. And I was like, you know, I've never really been involved in film, so it'd be fun just right. to get on set. And so I contacted them and um, I got on set. Like what they were doing with this project is, you know, kind of like how the office, it was an office setting largely, um, you know, yeah. they have their set background that are always there. So, right. you know, it's it's a full-time job because you, you have to be there and they have to be able to count on you to always be at your desk and that kind of thing. And um, so I got in on that project and while we were filming, they kind of wrote in this other role and it was for um, like a, a comedic role actually. And I'd never done com comedy at all. And uh, I ended up playing Alicia Silverstone's secretary on this pilot. And it had uh, Peter Jacobson, Darren Starr was directing. Um, Peter Fonda was on it. Um, and so that was really fun, and it was there that I fell in love with filmmaking and went on to, um, you know, do some day player stuff for um, some other Lifetime shows and AMC and ABC. And um, from there, I went, you know, I, I have so many stories to tell. My life story is absolutely crazy, which is a whole different episode. And... Yeah. Um, I was like, I have stories to tell and, and things to to tell people and messages to to relay to not just tell them, but to help people and help people relate to them and and, you know, get something out of them. And so that's when I started writing. I went and I studied all sorts of um, different websites and YouTube channels and read all kinds of books and everything about screenwriting so that whenever I started in it, I knew what I was talking about. And so. I, I was always kind of a writer, um, but, you know, didn't know anything about screenwriting. And, and I discovered in that that I'm actually really talented at it. And, and that's not just me saying that. Everybody who reads my stuff is like, wow, this is great. I'm like, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And so, yeah, that, that's how I got my start in entertainment. That's incredible. I'm, I'm sure it was a pretty uh, surreal feeling, too, to be on, on set um, of a Lifetime movie or uh, it was a television show or movie and uh, be yeah. around, like, growing up seeing these people. Uh, and for, uh, for a lot of people, I know at least for me, <laughs> I say a lot of people, I'm sure, but I know there's a lot of people who are like, I wish I could be an actor. I wish I could be like that person. I want to be on. What was it like for you when you got that call and you and you found out you were going to be on a show and working with these people? Like, obviously, you had you had been acting and, and doing that type of thing, but this is this was on a different level, right? Yeah, it was really hard because you know I Alicia Silverstone is not that much older than me, but right. you know Clueless was like. I remember. favorite movie when I was a teenager. My and sisters so, watched that movie every single day after school. Like it was on, <laughs> it was on 24 yeah. <laughs> seven. It's ridiculous. And, 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 you know, so it was hard, you know, Peter Fonda, you know, he's out of my generation. He's still an icon, but you know, just being in her right. presence for me, it was like, yeah, yeah. We, we ran into each other going in and out of the bathroom one day and um, she gave me a spill for about 20 minutes about PETA. And by the end of the conversation, I ended up joining like every PETA organization there was. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, and I would get, for years, I got these messages, you know, ban so-and-so from doing this with the lions or the monkeys and all of that. And I would think back to her conversations, like, I'm doing this for Alicia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's star power right there. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. So um what what did you have to do though? I mean, it's it's not the easiest industry to get into. I mean, you've you've had to work a lot, right? Like what would your advice be to people who are trying to get into the industry? Um obviously you're still you're still working on getting your first film made, that kind of thing. What do you yeah. think it that sets you apart and that's gotten you as far as you've gotten so far? Well, um, the first thing is just get on set somewhere. You know, there's tons of people who are, are up and coming who are starting their first and second projects. And they're not, usually they're not paying jobs, but those kind of jobs are ones that you can get on set and learn. Um, I've produced about, probably about a dozen shorts so far. And the call out to the community hey i need actors i need people who you know can help us out people who have a camera who just want to learn a camera while i'm while i'm learning to direct you know and and all of those kinds of things and so you know especially in the major cities there's going to be a film group of, of some sort that um or person that is is learning as well and so it's a great opportunity to get on those kinds of sets because you know there's no pressure there yeah. you're learning as they're learning and so you know as an actor you want to be in class you you've got to be in class and you've got to you know learn how to take your body and and cultivate those tools and that mindset of of going from here to here um mm -hmm. i work with a lot of actors who on set they're just so far into their own head and insecure and and don't know how to use this this tool that they have want and it's because they don't have a lot of experience they're not in class and in classes where you want to be um and, and and to get into the industry as an actor um you know you're not going to find an agent until you have an industry standard headshot and that doesn't just mean go down to jc penny or sears or, or wherever um it, you've got to have a photographer who actually is familiar with the film industry industry standard headshot yeah. Um, there's so many headshots that you see out there that, you know, look like somebody took a selfie and it's like, no, um, <laughs> that doesn't work. Um, and you've got to have an acting reel and, and that's where getting on some of these, um, non-paying sets will help you because then they can give you the footage for those. And you can, if you're familiar with editing, you can edit together a, a reel 
um, or you can pay somebody to put a reel together for you. You can, mm. you know, Google it, you know, for YouTube and, you know, just look at acting reels. There's tons of them up there and see what they look like. Um, and, you know, you got to have the headshot, you got to have the reel in order to get an agent. And then once you get an agent, then, you, you know, you just go from there and you got to learn how to do a lot of self-taping auditions, which is an art in itself. Right. And um, it, it, it can be challenging for somebody who's who's not sure and um, how to do it. And I, I teach a lot of workshops about how to self audition and. Reaction. And if you don't have that experience, you know, acting with other people, then when you get into a self tape by yourself, you have absolutely no idea what to do and you just look like a statue of some sort. Um, yeah. So it doesn't you, do well on camera. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that's what we we'll talk about too, because you do have your own you, where you teach um, these these lessons too, and you're and you're doing the self taping for other people as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. And is that yeah. is that like part of your business that you have in, in Alabama right now? And you Huntsville, correct? You said. Yes. Um, well, I I help to run a group called Huntsville Indie Filmmakers. And okay. what we do is um, I just kind of happened across this group and they were, I went to the first meeting and I, I realized that the majority of people, like nine out of 10 of them had never even been on a real movie set before. Yeah. Like, we're Huntsville Indie Filmmakers, but we've never been on a movie set before. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. <laughs> and I, I approached the, the guy who was helping head it up. The people who started it moved away and yeah. left this group, and, but they still wanted to continue, but they really didn't know how to continue. And so I came to a meeting because I was like, oh, well, this is interesting. I'm going to go see what this is about. And so I'm um, going to that first meeting. I was like, wow, okay. Um, so I approached that. A uh, person who kind of stepped up and you know was just kind of keeping the meetings running and, and stuff and really they were just showing up and talking about stuff you know it was more like a fan group um full of people who wanted to actually do it but they didn't know how and so i i approached him and i said um i would love to help you to cultivate this group and and let it grow and you know kind of set out a plan you know you know, we can bring in people who can actually teach these jobs to these people. And yeah. so I started doing workshops within that group. And then I also host um, like acting workshops on the side. That group has kind of turned more into like a technical side of things. Everything that's behind the camera is, is the majority of those people what they want to learn. And so separate from that, I, I host acting workshops. We did a, a four day acting workshop recently. Um, and then at the end of that workshop, then we shoot, all, we take the day and we shoot a bunch of scenes to give them a reel to, to help them get an agent. And we teach them how to self tape, what kind of headshots you need. Um, we'll take your headshot if you need one. Um, and, you know, just all the ins and outs of filmmaking, both, you know, in front of the camera and what the people behind the camera expect from you. Wow. And um, we had Chad Darnell come in from Savannah. He does a lot of, of big time casting in Georgia. Um, in Savannah and Atlanta and South Carolina, I believe. Um, and so we had him come in for one evening and, and do a, a whole spill about, you know, what as a casting director do I expect from you when you step into to the, the room if you are, you know, to be granted an in-person audition. And right. so that was really good and everyone really enjoyed it. And um, like I said, you know, we've, we've helped tape their reels and, and that kind of thing. And I'm actually getting geared up. The, the people who are on this last set for the 72 have had several come up and say, hey, I would really like to do some training. And I was like, okay. So I'm about to set up another acting workshop. Um, it, it'll probably just be like a one or two day workshop this time just because of everything else I've got going on. I don't have time to. Yeah. You know. Do it. I was going to ask, how often do you do? Are these simply just sort of like whenever you have the need arises, you put up workshops, or are they things that you plan out throughout the year that you have set dates? Like I know you just did the seventy-two hour one. 
Yeah. Well, the, the acting workshops, I, I hope to do for a year. I just started them last year when, yeah. when I've, I've had people come to me all the time, you know, I'd really love to do some training. And, um, so, um, it, it's relatively new thing I'm doing, but I, I hope to do four workshops a year. Um, yeah. and you know, bring in people. There's people driving like two and three hours away. Really cool to, to see that and see the dedication. And um, because of that dedication, I've actually used them in some of my films. Um, well, that's the thing, right? It's like, you gotta be willing to put in a lot of work if you wanna stand out. Like, it's not like just show up on the set and expect, or show up anywhere and expect to have something handed to you. Oh yeah, you and, and you know, there's 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 people who come to the workshops or auditions or, or whatever who just stand out because you can tell they're dedicated and it's their passion. And then you know, and and they're set apart from the people who come in who really don't have a lot of experience, but they think they're all that. And yeah. um, you know, it, it it's kind of fun sometimes to to humble people. <laughs> I can imagine put them in really tough situations. Mm -hmm. You do a lot of improv stuff with them? In the workshops, yes. Yes, we do a little bit of work of improv stuff. And then also we'll take like scenes from different scripts that I've written or, you know, stuff that's in the public domain. And be like, okay, here's 20 minutes. Here's your scene partner. Go figure it out. And then they'll come back and then we'll, we'll workshop that scene and, and teach them, you know, you know, what it's you're so saying, fun. you know, are you really thinking about what you're saying? Because I don't really see it on your face. <laughs> it's, <so laughs> it's just making making faces in the in, in opportune times. It sounds so fun. Like the it sounds like being a little getting to be a little kid again and just like making making stuff up. Do you have like improv exercises that you do? Yeah, I mean, um, and and sometimes I'll even take scripts and I'll get okay. them. To improv with scripts if that makes sense yeah. um this is the general idea this is your character and this is what they're going through or, or dealing with and i'll get them to do it normal and then you know maybe i'll have them switch roles they're still saying the same lines but they're playing the other character uh -huh. um, you know, and that kind of thing. And it helps people get into the mindset of what are they thinking and how should I really be reacting to me when I'm playing me, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, it, you, you, as an actor, you really need to be able to get into the head of your character and, and what a better way of getting into the head of your character than playing the other person seeing you. I Yeah, and I think as you know, this is a writer too, it's like, having to get into the character's head as a writer and i know how many times i've written characters and i've like viscerally like acted out or talked out or made the faces of what i think there's like am i describing the face right am i going through the the proper um, indications of what they're actually feeling like having to be in the character um right. so that you're not you're not saying the voice the character is saying the things through you right yeah, and seeing someone else play that, it also gives you the opportunity to critique them and be like, yeah. well, you know, if, if I were playing this role, this is how I would do it differently. You know, so. That's so cool. It's something I've always wanted to do. I've always just been too chicken to even try. Um, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I, and, uh, and it's neat getting to talk to actors, getting to talk to other writers, people who are actually doing the thing. And, um, because it's inspiring, it's like, it, and it gets, it gives me a, a, a perspective of you don't just show up and it happens, right? It's like you go and you put in work day after day after day after day after day, and there's no promise that it's gonna ever happen. But right. it's, not, it's like, it's like the difference between um, running marathons to win and running marathons because you love running, right? Like if I ran a marathon to win. I'd be sadly, I would, I would hate running marathons, but if I run marathons because I love running, well, then I get my, I'm satisfied all the time. It's, and obviously you love acting, you love writing and, and help teaching. It sounds like you more than anything else. It's like being of service and helping others grow is something that's profoundly important to you. 
Oh yeah. Um, you know, because I, being in Huntsville, there's just not a lot of people who have had opportunity to get the training that they, they need, but they have that desire. Um, and so for, for me, it's about giving back and helping other people reach their, their goals and their dreams. And, and that's, that's what's more important to me because, you know, like with Huntsville and the filmmakers, I don't make a dime off of that. I, uh, you know, it's, it's a free program. There, there's no charge for that. Um, anybody can come and, and learn, especially the, the technical side of, of everything. Um, so, yeah. And, Is there you know, the a sign? All the numbers, I mean, you have like a, a prior sign up into where it, where it fills up since it's, you're not making anybody pay for this. It's a free no, we, we have a room at a, a university nearby who lets us rent it. Um, because one of the, the other gentlemen who was kind of running it before I came along to help him, uh, he works there. And mm -hmm. so he, you know, of course can get a room whenever he needs to. And, um, so that's there, there's plenty of space and each week we just, you know, broadcast. Okay. So the next meeting, this is who's going to be there. This is what we're learning. This is what we'll be doing. You know, if we're doing a workshop, bring your gear. And, and that kind of thing. And we just see who shows up. Sometimes we can have five people. Sometimes we can have 30 people, depending on what we're doing and who's there or what's going on in the community. Oh, that's amazing. Do you have a website for all this? There's a Facebook page and it's Huntsville Indie Filmmakers. Okay, Huntsville Indie Filmmakers. Awesome. Do you, okay. <laughs> do, you, do you have like an improv, uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, uh, pff, wow, <laughs> I'm terrible at this. <laughs> I uh, thing like a, a not technique, but um, practice of some sort that we could do right now <laughs> on the spot. <laughs> I I don't know. <laughs> You're wanting to improv with me? <laughs> yeah. I I like doing crazy stuff like that. Like I I freestyled with another uh, author. We yeah. did a freestyle rap at the end of our interview. Nice. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> it was <horrible. laughs> but it's fun, right? Like that's the whole point. It's like it's if you don't, it's cool. I just thought we could try. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I, with improv, I, you just gotta jump in and and go for it. Okay, so let's set the scene. Okay. All right, so it's late, right? And <laughs> I'm sitting, I'm sitting in my car <laughs> in a parking lot somewhere. Okay. Okay. That's all we got. That's all we got right now. I'm sitting in my car in a parking lot. Okay. Is that is that enough? Sure. Okay, I'll start. Okay. Damn car won't start again. It's the third time this week. <sighs> Never gonna make it out of this hole. God, why? Excuse me. What the, what the hell? What? What do you want? Have you seen my dog? It's a little white dog. It's about this big. It's a chihuahua, like so yap a lot. You scared the living bejesus out of me. She needs her medicine, and so I, I'm just trying to find her, and I was wondering if you'd seen her. No, I haven't I haven't seen your dog. What, what, what do you even, why is your dog out so late? Do you even know what time it is? Doesn't it have school in the morning? It's a dog. I, yeah, she, dog she, school. She, she got off the leash. Sorry, I'm having a tough time. Look, listen, your dog needs medication. I'm a doctor. I'm a dog doctor. Oh, you're a veterinarian? No, I'm a dog doctor. You're not listening to me. I'll go. What flavor is your dog? Chihuahua. That's my favorite flavor. I had a, I had a Chihuahua once. Oh, yeah? No, but if I did, 
Let's go find this dog. What's your name, ma'am? Susie. Susie, I'm Harrison. Nice to meet you. Hi, Harrison. Hello. Hey. You know, I was just pondering, sitting in my car, as it wouldn't start. It sure would be nice to help somebody named Susie today. Her, her name is Daisy. Wow. Like a flower that blooms, that blooms at night. She's white. She's what? a white dog? Yes. Have Let's, you seen? Oh, you haven't seen. Let's go find your dog, Susie. We, we, shall, pluck, we shall pluck the daisy from the night as it has left and seen. <laughs> I was about to say, are you on drugs? <laughs> right. That's what I was going for. It was a it was a dramatic comedy. <laughs> I think okay. So you have people like that though, right? Like idiots like me who want to just completely take it off course all the time, right? It happens and and I don't think it's necessarily on purpose. It's just they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, I have no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it my all, though. Thank you so much for playing along with me. I appreciate that. No problem. It was funny. Um, and you just had a birthday, too, right? I did. I was on set for my birthday. Best but place did, to be. Did you get to celebrate, like, cake and everybody singing to you? Um, well, I, I had a meeting that morning, and, and actually, it started off like, okay, guys, yesterday was not good. Today is going to be better because we're going to do this, 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 and this. And we got to stay focused and we got to do this and we got to do that or else we're not going to make our day. And um, first AD raises his hand. He's like, I have something to say. And I was like, okay. And um, so he starts off with happy birthday to you. So everybody started <laughs> singing. Um, nice. I, I have a lot of food allergies. And so I can't really have cake. And so I think several people knew that. And so they just kind of sang happy birthday to me. What can you have in lieu of cake? There's other sweet things. Is it, is it like the gluten and what is it? The sugar and cake or? I'm <laughs> allergic to anything that is a preservative or, ah. um, you know, something that's man-made, um, uh, gluten, and, yeah. you know, like artificial sugars and, and different things like that. And so I, I pretty much eat like a bird. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Yay, bird food. Birds eat other birds. So do you eat, uh, I don't know. Somebody told me that. I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> Let's not find out. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I had another question I was going to ask you. Oh, uh. So in terms of the the movie you're making right now, Pretty Big Girl, you're in you're trying to get funding for it after doing this proof. Are you doing like any kind of like startup or like kickstart things, or is it strictly through production companies? Because I want to, if anybody's willing to be of service and help out, you know, get the word out or put up money or whatever it is, whatever you need, kind of deal. I mean, if that's available, an option. Yeah, um, for the proof of concept, we had a private investor. Um, and that works really well because, you know, they're just like, okay, so here's this and creatively do what you need to do. Um, and so that was good, but I know going into a, a feature, you know, it can't really be that relaxed, um, because people putting in, you know, a couple of hundred thousand dollars, you know, they're yeah. going to want to, you know, be a, a little more in, involved in all of that. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're seeking investments, um, you know, it, it's production company wise, it'll be produced through Excelsior Entertainment with with Brownwood doing the grip electric and um, camera support and, and all of that. Um, but yeah, we're seeking, um, you know, we can go one or two ways. We can, um, you know, have investors come on and we produce it or we can sell it or, you know, whatever. Um, we would love to have like a a major network like Lifetime or Hallmark or something like that come on and and you know take it and give birth to it um but you know we're we're open to you know 
producing it ourselves if we can find the money as well. Okay, okay. cool. And is it is it faux pas to ask like how much of a how much of an investment it, it like it is to actually make a film of this sort? How much money do you are you looking for? The the budget for this, you know, with any film, you know, you have your low ball budget of you know, what is the absolute minimum it would take to produce this with, you know, normal everyday people. And then you have your budget of, okay, so if I got this actor and this grip company, you know, it's going to cost this much. Um, but we're looking at anywhere, which even then it's really low. We're looking at anywhere from, you know, a starting point of about 100000 and okay. then, you know, if we can get, you know, some name talent involved, then the price goes up from there um, that it would cost to, to produce it. Well, so you're playing the main, you're playing the main role, correct? Your, your main character, right? <clears throat> right now, yes. Yeah. Um, if, you know, sometimes if you, you know, bring somebody on who's, you know, putting the money out there, you know, they may say, hey, I really want this person. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it's not a done deal that I play it. I would love to direct it more than play the role, personally. Right. Because that's okay. just, I mean, I, I love acting and I, I, I get a lot of energy and and everything from acting. But my my heart is in directing. So, yeah. Very cool. Well, Laura Ann, um, I, I do want to thank you again so much for coming on the Uniweb Interview Show, where all people become one people. <laughs> Can we talk um, really quickly about Revify? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so Revify, Revify is a touring group that we're starting up, yes, in the mix of all of this other stuff. Um, and it, it's a, a, a touring faith-based production. Um, where we tour a different show every year. And this, this first year, um, we hope to, you know, have our group and, and everything together by the summer in order to tour over the summer. Um, it would probably stay, you know, regional within the Southeast for the first year as we're starting up and all of that. Of course, if we have people come forward who um, are going to help fund it, of course, you know, we can go abroad and, and get actors on board that can travel full time. Um, yeah. But Revify is, it's a touring group that is faith-based. Everything that we produce will have a, a biblical message of some sort, um, or family-friendly at least. Um, but, you know, we hope to have a, a company, like a troop, of uh -huh. anywhere between 10 and 15 people. And the first show that we're doing this year is on the parables. And we're, we're taking a twist on the parables and, and actually, you know, in the, in the Bible, the, the different parables, you know, the people don't interact with each other. They're separate stories and, you know, stand on their own. Um, right. but we're actually going to have these characters, you know, meet each other and interact with each other and, and see, you know, what fun we can, we can do with that. And um, what we need for rest. you know in the background doing the sound and lighting and, and all of those sorts of things musicians who can come forward and you know write music and choreographers who can come in and choreograph um pieces it, it's not necessarily musical but a lot of musical aspects are, are are put into it you know with crazy lighting and people drumming and and all sorts of fun stuff to make it visually very appealing and and people enjoy it as well as as getting a you know entertainment from it um, and a message and that kind of thing. So you know we're we're seeking we're about to get our five hundred one c three. So it will be a nonprofit. And so um, in in being nonprofit, we can accept donations, we can fundraise, and and all of those sorts of things um, since it is a ministry. And so we just we need people who yeah. are willing to come on board this team 
in order to produce something that is a live show that tours. And, you know, of course, that's all going back to my my Broadway days. And I have, you know, all these ideas in my head. We could do this and this and that. And visually, you know, all of these sorts of things. And I have to realize this isn't Broadway. Um, but we can get there. Close. We can get there with, yeah. you know, the right funding. And I know there's a lot of churches out there who... Um, if they know about something like this, you know, they will sign on to be sponsors. And so we're looking for sponsors to come on board to fund this ministry um, that can tour as well as, you know, the company itself that we're seeking actors and choreographers and musicians and dancers and, and whole nine yards. So um, we have a Facebook page. It's Revify, okay. um, Revify Arts. And uh, our email address is revifyarts at gmail.com. If anybody is interested in, in reaching out about being in the show or, you know, helping with lighting, sound, all of those sorts of things, or if, you know, you're interested in sponsoring the ministry. So, yeah. I can put all the links to that in the, the video description as well. That's really cool. So when are you hoping to have it all started by? We <clears> hope <throat> to have it up and running by um, June. Okay. Yeah. Is that five months, four months. Yeah. Um, of course, that's touring. So we, you know, we hope to by April, May, somewhere in there to to have our company and everybody in place. That's a part of the puzzle. So we're, we're looking biggest, for people quickly. Yeah. Here's the biggest question that I think everyone wants to know: Will there be a very cool tour bus? Yes, actually, I, I have a friend who I met in Nashville, um, who has become a very good friend actually. And she runs a company that provides the tour buses yes. and the trucks for equipment and, and all of that for major um, musicians and artists and touring groups. And so, yes, we have all of that. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah. I want to play the kid that runs away. And uh, come, what's it called? The uh, prodigal son? Yeah. <laughs> can, right. can I be that guy? Sure. Yes. That would be awesome. <laughs> that sounds so fun. I'm so sure that's, I'm in. Yes. I'm so excited that you're doing all this amazing stuff. I'm really, really interested in all of it. And I'm sure there are so many people who are going to be watching this that are also interested. Um, I'm going to provide links to all your work and everything that you're doing in the description below. Lauren, thank you again so much um, for coming on. I'm going to stop recording here in just a second, but don't go anywhere, okay? Okay. Thank you for having me. It's, my, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you would, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification for the bell. You know what? We love you. Love you. Love you. Love you.